time to play. Estimated jackpot. Off the ball. This is News Talk. You're very welcome back. It's time to preview Glasgow Warriors against Leinster in the Pro 14 final. Kickoff at Celtic Park tonight is at half past six. And all our rugby coverage here on Off the Ball is brought to you with thanks to Vodafone, Team of Us, Everyone In. And I'm delighted to say now that former Ulster player Darren Cave is with us on the line. How are you, Darren? Good, thank you. It's a bit strange being introduced as a former uh, Ulster player, but you're looking a bit better than the last time I saw you at the draft in Nashville, uh, so it's good to see you again. <laughs> well, uh, good thing uh, we're broadcasting mostly to radio viewers uh, today who might not have back here, but radio listeners, I should say, who might not have seen that. But thanks for bringing that up, Darren. Appreciate that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I was about to say, it does feel a bit jarring even saying former Ulster player. How has the last week been? Obviously, the results last Friday was a disappointing one. Did, did that kind of temper the, the celebrations or however you managed to enjoy yourself last week at all? Um, it's been it's been strange. And uh, as you say, being introduced as a former player and hitting in that I am a former player. And, um, you know, at the minute, I don't feel like I'm going to miss playing rugby, but it's... Uh, I remember Mike McCarthy joking about leaving the WhatsApp groups and genuinely that's been the hardest bit so far, just the sort of um, coming to terms with the fact that I'm not one of the lads anymore. So that's been the toughest bit so far. So what happens there? Do you elect to just leave the WhatsApp group or does somebody kick you out of it? You leave. I, I left before I was kicked. Um, so I did the, did the honourable thing yeah. and fell on my sword early doors. <laughs> Uh, we, we'll come back to that maybe if you have time at the end. We should just get stuck into to Glasgow against Leinster this evening. And like obviously you can speak better than most other people at the moment as to how strong this Glasgow team. Could you sum up at all what's it like to come up against this machine that they seem to be at the moment? Yeah, I mean, they are, they're a formidable side. Um, obviously very good at home. I think the one struggled with them this year, I think we struggled with actually um, at the game line when they're able to get momentum and they're able to win those collisions uh, and then Ali Price gets a bit of time and Hastings gets a bit of time and he's throwing those long balls over the top um, they're almost unstoppable so w- I think Leinster have a gear of physicality that, that Ulster didn't have this year um, so that's where that's where the game's going to be sort of won and lost for me if Glasgow get that momentum at the game line they're unstoppable but Leinster are big enough and strong enough to stop them yeah, it seems that it's a sort of slow, consistent pressure that they build on you, but at the same time, they can play from anywhere. Yeah, um, and as a, as a so-called neutral now, they are fantastic to watch. And I think, I think in fairness to them, they are known for that really loose style, but uh, the forwards probably don't get enough credit. And, uh, you know, Dave Rennie, um, they're coaching them. You know, he's very much this, um, I think, in building... He used the word brutality, which mm. is maybe not the, the best word to use, but um, it sums up their attitude coming into the game. So what they are about flair and, and nice running, they're, they really are about um, muscling up and, and winning that battle up front, first of all. Yeah, you mentioned that physicality. Was everybody in the Ulster changing room last Friday night just absolutely wrecked after coming up against that? Yeah, and you know it was a strange changing room because there's no doubt we didn't give a good account of ourselves but there was definitely a feeling that um, if we'd uh, played our best we still potentially would have struggled on the day when we lost the quarter final to Leinster and um, while I believe that this Leinster team are a better team than Ulster I felt that quarter final to Leinster we had done enough on the day to win the game and that meant that you know when you were watching the semi-final against uh, Toulouse in Dublin you, you were left thinking that could have been us today mm. whereas from an Ulster point of view the two best teams in the Pro 14, the two most deserving teams in the Pro 14 are in the final today. I don't think any other team can have any complaints. And uh, I think they're, uh, I think it's going to be a great game to watch. I think it's a great advert for the league at Celtic Park. Um, so in many ways, there's a bit of closure on that front that um, while I do think on our day, Ulster are capable, um, we weren't good enough this year. And there's, there's good closure on that. Yeah, if you look at the past meetings between Leinster and Glasgow in the recent past, you look at the Champions Cup last year, Leinster beat them relatively comfortable on both occasions. But it seems that since then, Glasgow have obviously taken a step forward this year and Leinster seems to stagger just a touch. And that has closed the gap, I think it's fair to say, this year. Yeah, and Glasgow, since that quarterfinal defeat to Saracens, have been genuinely unstoppable. They mm. they got an, uh, a comfortable win against us. They've won in uh, in Dublin at the RDS, and then they beat us again. 
and that uh, Sky Van- well. um, but <laughs> oh we just uh, we seem to be uh, having trouble with the connection there you can, you can still hear me there Darren yeah, it's oh, sorry. Yeah, dial up here in, in, in Belfast. Dial up internet, is it? It's uh, it's it's pretty good there. Apologies. Go ahead. Yeah, and no, I was just saying since that um, since that Saracens game, uh, Glasgow being top drawer, they beat us comfortably. I think they beat Edinburgh. They won at the RDS. They beat us comfortably again. Um, but but as I said, I just think a full strength Leinster um, can maybe not bring quite bring. The, the physicality that Saracens brought, but they can bring something very close to it. And that was the same physicality that stopped this Glasgow team and stopped them convincingly. And that's just where I think tonight's going to be interesting. Can Leinster produce a level of physicality similar to what Saracens did in that quarterfinal? And that's where that's where they're in is in this game. That's very interesting. So if you compare the two sort of outcomes when you've come up against these physical outfits, Glasgow and Leinster, obviously you would have felt, probably rightly so, that you could have beaten Leinster that night in the Aviva Stadium, and yet the result was so different against Glasgow. What is the marked difference between these sides? Um, I think uh, it's a good question. I think Leinster obviously have a bit more big game experience. Um, I think Leinster are slightly more um, rounded. I think um, I think if, if Glasgow can't get that sort of go forward that enables them to play that really loose game, I'd just be interested to see how they get on. I think Leinster, I don't think they have any obvious weaknesses. Mm. Um, to bring it back to an Ulster point of view, I think when we got Leinster in the quarterfinal, they were, they were very vulnerable in terms of who was injured and the way they were playing. I was quite impressed with them last week against Munster. Uh, from an Ulster point of view, we, we lost that game to... Um, to Leinster and it's incredibly hard to front up the next week so I was very impressed with how Leinster came through last week without playing spectacularly with a couple of frontliners on the bench um, and while they haven't been in form like this is a top side that have got a big performance in them so I wouldn't be surprised you know Leinster will be all guns blazing and they could come tonight yeah you mentioned the, the goal forward ball that's so crucial for Glasgow and Dave Rennie's been speaking about this in the build-up to the game. He says that the quick ball is going to be essential for them to win the game. Leinster, they'll have to slow it down, he says, but ultimately this is something that Leinster are very good at. They're very well equipped to slow the ball down when they want to. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've played Leinster three times in 2019 and like defensively, they're very well organised. Stuart Lancaster has them uh, has them very well organised. Their spacing is quite wide, so they're a very very hard team to get around. Um, but um, you know they're they're very very physical at the contact point. Uh, it's stating the obvious a little, but when you run into them, like you get hit, and the breakdown is is, is an absolute. Um, I was going to use an expletive there, an absolute <laughs> mess. Um, and uh, you know the ball's not always quick, so that'll be the challenge for Leinster. Can they slow up? and stop this Glasgow machine. I believe they can. Um, It's more a matter of will they. Yeah, and I guess when you talk about things that they might come up against, you've also got the huge hometown support, which you'd imagine will be out in force tonight. A Lions Den uh, is something you could equate it to, and you get the sense that Leinster will just love that, Darren, that the likes of Johnny Sexton love going into that sort of atmosphere and trying to spoil the party. Yeah, and Johnny, in his uh, his press conference yesterday, I saw his quote. He says the the 23 of us are going into to take on uh, the 40,000 Glasgow fans. And that's typical of Johnny and the sort of siege mentality mm. that he has in his head. And, you know, he creates in that dressing room. Everybody is out to get us. Nobody believes in us. And that's just why this team comes back and keeps winning things. And Johnny's been so successful because he's created this little environment where his head, so you can tell those boys. I'm not convinced that there's not going to be a load of support for Leinster. I think, you know, Leinster are very well... Uh, followed and there's loads of Irish in in Glasgow and Scotland so I think there'll be loads of support for for both sides I do think obviously it's an incredibly special occasion Mm. for for those boys particularly the ones uh, brought up in Glasgow what a what a dream they would be playing at Celtic Park if this game was at the Aviva I'd be back in um, Leinster for sure but I mean, the Celtic Park factor's got to come into it as well. Like it's it's a, such a big occasion for those Glasgow players. Yeah, the Sexton press conference was interesting this week. One of the things that I picked up on was he was talking about how Saracens have such a good record of going on the road and winning. When he was asked about going to Celtic Park and getting the job done today, 
I wonder how many times you're going to hear Saracens mentioned in Leinster press conferences over the next couple of months. I'm starting to get the sense that what happened in Newcastle is going to have a prolonged effect, possibly in a positive way, on this Leinster outfit. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it could do. And the one thing, as I said, it's um, it just it's very um, it's it's very typical of Johnny to to make a statement like that. And um, you look at Saracens as well. And I I mentioned the siege mentality in sport and you've got to play like there's a chip on your shoulder because in the end of the day, that's the thing that's going to motivate you. And if you look at Saracens, you know, they're not overly popular anywhere. Nobody overly likes them. We've seen what Billy Vinopola has been involved in. We've seen him getting booed. They just seem to love it. Um, and I just get the impression that, that Johnny and Lance are just saying, Glasgow, you know, you come at us, bring 40,000, bring 50,000 to your fans. Everyone's out to get us. Nobody thinks we can do it. And, and that's their motivation. And that's what, what, what's really going to get them to that top couple of percent that's going to be needed to win this game. Who's going to win this evening, Darren? Flip. It's a, honestly, I, I, as I said, I think if it was in the Viva, I would definitely say Leinster. The Celtic Park factor is going to come into it. Um, literally 51% of me is saying Leinster. Um, just, I think they're a more rounded team um, really, really well coached. Not that Glasgow aren't. I, I just, I don't see, I see Glasgow as like 1%. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised wrong, don't hold me to it, but I'm slightly... Just as we're getting the prediction from uh, Darren Cave there, the, the line breaks up. I think you were saying a 1% leading towards Glasgow? Yeah, sorry. The, uh, I'm sorry. I was I was waffling. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was just saying um, they're they're so evenly matched. I think yeah. Leinster have a tiny bit more big game experience. Um, the Celtic Park factor's got to come into it. But yeah, I think I'm just going one percent of me just thinks sure. that that Glasgow have a tiny bit of vulnerability that I don't think Leinster have. Right, okay, fair enough. Uh, just one of the other elements from the game, like looking at Rob Kearney and his future should be sorted out perhaps in, in the next couple of days and that allure of going abroad, it got me thinking just about you and you finishing up playing at the age of 32. Rob Kearney is 33 and he's clearly going to continue on. Did that allure of going abroad ever appeal to you? Yeah, d definitely. I mean, there's a few things come into it for me. Um, I'm about to become a dad for the first time in July, so... You know, it's, it's a family decision, go on abroad. Um, my sort of, Rob's in a bit of a different scenario as me, as a sort of British lion with, you know, how many Ireland caps, but my, my sort of legacy is more with Ulster. And to me, it's, it, I wanted to retire as a one-club man. Um, it was something I thought about, and uh, ultimately I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go before... Um, I felt if I hung around at Ulster, I might have slipped down the pecking order and might have, you know, ended up watching a bit and, and just leaving with a bad taste in my mouth and with people going, Darren Cave, is he still playing? And I just thought that was a sort of a sad legacy to leave after after 13 or more years. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Rob does because um, at the minute it looks like I'd be surprised if he was in blue next year. But, um, yeah, good on him. He's been a great player for a long time. Yeah, he certainly has. We must catch up again soon, Darren, and get your full plans for retirement. But just uh, as a brief final answer, is there anything off the top of your head that you're planning on doing over the next year or so? Um, taking a wee break and catching a breath uh, for the summer. Going to watch a lot of rugby, try and be wee bits and bobs in the media, try and figure out um, how to become how to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, uh, not too sure what the, what the afterlife holds for me yet. We'll see. Well, the very best of luck with that new arrival, Darren, this summer. We'll chat again soon. Thanks many for taking the call. Thank you. Cheers. Darren Cave there, live in the line. It is Leinster away to Glasgow Warriors, I think it's fair to say, at Celtic Park at half past six in the Guinness Pro 14 final this evening. Just to tell you what's coming up tomorrow, because we're wrapping up uh, early and off the ball this evening. The paper review with Declan Lynch and Gary Doyle will be kicking things off shortly after one o'clock and off the ball. Ricky Elliott, who's Brooks Kepka's caddy, will be speaking to Joe. Mossy Quinn will be watching Leash versus Westmeath and Kildare against Longford. It's a double header, while Dahi Regan will be at the hurling game, the only hurling game in the top tier of the championship this weekend. It's Galway against Wexford. Then we've got a bit of Clive Tilsley who is speaking with Shane Hannan on the 20th anniversary of the Manchester United treble in 99. And then finally then, 
have rugby chat with Andy Dunn. He'll be reflecting on the Pro 14 final tomorrow with Joe. So it's a packed old show. Just to tell you so far, in the Scottish Cup, we're into the 95th minute and it looks like Celtic are going to win it. They are 2-1 up at the moment. And also, if you missed it earlier on, Jamie Spencer has ridden the winner of the 2,000 guineas at the Curra. 16-1 to one shot. Phoenix of Spain won the trainer for Charles Hill. A bit of a, Hills is a bit of a, a shock there. And then later on this evening, Dublin begin the defence of their Leinster and All-Ireland football titles. It's a big weekend of GEA and you can follow all the scores and updates at Off The Ball. We'll chat to you tomorrow afternoon from 1 o'clock. Bye-bye for now.